In this video, I'll share what I think is the number one mistake which a lot of aspiring data scientists make pretty much on a daily basis. And having spent 10 plus years in the industry, having conducted hundreds of interviews and hiring dozens of candidates, it really pains me on why people are spending so much time on what actually doesn't help them get hired and that precious time could have been spent somewhere else which could actually increase the odds of getting them hired. So that number one mistake which I'm talking about is spending too much time building and refining your portfolio projects so that you could put them in your resume and that would magically help you get hired. Now, I am not against building portfolios if it is just for your own learning perspective, but, but from actually getting hired and having your resume getting perspective, portfolios do not have a lot of substance. Portfolios actually do not contribute a lot. Let me tell you why. The, so the number one reason is that even if someone looks at your majestic portfolio, and try to see that how many beautiful data sets you have analyzed. There is no way of knowing that it was actually you who wrote that code or was it a tutorial which someone has built and you are just copy pasting or maybe you have just gone through some other person's GitHub and copy pasted their code. And or another full possibility nowadays is that you have asked ChatGPT to write that code for you. There is no way of knowing that by just looking at your GitHub. And that is why it does not add any level of trust for the hiring managers, for the recruiters, when they look at your portfolio. The second thing is that hiring managers just don't have enough time. Look at your resume, look at your LinkedIn, look at your GitHub and see what are different projects you have tried. A very interesting and shocking but true fact is that a typical recruiter spends less than five seconds at a resume while screening a candidate. So your value add should be very clear and it should be in your resume for the recruiter to select it and move it to the next stages because otherwise usually people just don't have enough time to go and look at your GitHub, look at different data sets you have analyzed there, knowing that it is entirely possible that someone else has written that code. The other thing is that nowadays, including that GitHub is just becoming so much common and pretty much every candidate has it that even if you include it, it still does not help you stand out because this is something which everyone has. And most of the time it's people who do not have any other experience or any other credential which stands out, they don't have it. So if you have that GitHub with a lot of portfolios, I'm not saying that you should not add it, but don't spend a lot of time trying to clean up the code, structuring different folders, etc., to make it pretty and easy to consume and make it impressive because honestly, most people will never look at it. If you are actively looking for data science jobs, you might want to check my data science accelerator program. This is an exclusive program where I select very few students and I work with them to help them land their first data science job or internship. And that is 100% guaranteed. If you get selected for the program, you will get two times weekly calls with me in a small group setting and a monthly one-on-one -on -one call with me as well. And I'll go over your resume, your LinkedIn, your cover letters, and I'll help you narrow down the scope of your applications to the companies which are most likely to respond back to you. And not only that, I'll assess the weak spots in your technical knowledge and we'll do the mock interviews to make sure that you are fully prepared and confident when it comes to the interviews and you have a very good chance of clearing those interviews. And the best part is that the entire program is on a pay per result basis, which means that after the program, if you still do not get a data science job, you will get your entire money back, which makes it a zero risk decision for you. I work with very carefully selected, very few people. So if you are interested in learning more about the program, please check out the link in the description below. And lastly, the thing is that even if it is genuine, even if someone looks at it, and even if they think that you have written that code, it is still considered somewhat low effort thing in your resume than a lot of other things which I'm going to discuss right now. Now I want to caveat what I've said with again a preface that I'm not saying you should not build portfolio projects. Instead, actually I think that building something hands-on is 
the only way for you to learn. You can watch all the YouTube videos and Udemy tutorials and Coursera tutorials and read all the books. If you have not actually implemented something with your hand, there is no way you, you can develop any sort of expertise around it. So do build projects. I'm not saying that I'm against it. Also, if you are very strategic in terms of what kind of portfolio projects you are building, it can definitely help you develop expertise around a various set of skill sets, which will eventually help you land the job because all that knowledge will come in handy for you to demonstrate in your interview rounds. But I still want to double down on the fact that do it from the perspective of learning and not from the hope that if you put your GitHub, that GitHub in your LinkedIn or in your resume, someone will look at it and it will compensate for actual experience or a lot of other things. Now, this would definitely be very demoralizing because especially for freshers who do not have actual experience, portfolio building looks like the only opportunity for them to have some hands-on knowledge and something to demonstrate and show that okay, this is what I have created. So if that is not given a lot of weightage at the time of hiring, then this must be a bad news and very disheartening news, especially for people who do not have any prior experience. But since this is the reality, I wanted to share this with you. So do build portfolio projects, but keep this in mind. People don't have enough time when they're looking at your resume. This is a fact. And even if they go to your GitHub, there is no way of knowing that it was actually you who wrote the code. So for these reasons, generally, it does not help at all at the time of resume screening. So since I have sort of provided some critique to that, I also wanted to provide some alternatives on what you can do instead of spending a lot of time beautifying your portfolio projects. One thing which I have seen work really well is that you can post anything you learn and you can create a, a LinkedIn post. It could be a handwritten post like this. I really love this format. Anything you learn every day, it could be linear regression, it could be anything, some statistics concept. Try to have a one pager, handwritten note. What is it? What did you learn? And in the call to action, in this bottom section, you can add that if you are looking for hiring a data scientist, please reach out, I'm looking for new roles, etc. But this format of handwritten note with the heading and then handwritten structure of what did you learn today, if you keep posting day by day, when someone looks at your LinkedIn and you have plenty of such posts, it immediately signals to them that you are very passionate about data science. Once you have posted many such notes, it, it clearly tells the person who's looking at it that you have a lot of passion around data science, you're learning something new, and then since you're sharing it out in the public, this is how you identify, this is part of your identity. And all of these give a very positive signal to the recruiter or the hiring manager who's looking at your LinkedIn. And even if no one looks at it, the ability to learn something and synthesize it in a single page in a way that anyone can look at it and understand it, I think it just have great upside for just from the learning perspective as well. So this is a practice I pretty much preach every one of my students that you should focus on creating at least three posts in every week. What are things you learn? And just try to synthesize that knowledge in a single page. Put it in this format. Just post it on LinkedIn day after day, week after week. You'll have plenty of those. They'll get some impressions. For a lot of new people, those posts will be recommended. They'll get to see that. And then that establishes your brand as a data scientist so that when someone comes and look at it, since you have been doing it for a while, it gives a very clear and very good uh, impression. So this is the first thing which I generally recommend that you do. Now the next thing which I would suggest, and as you can see, this list is sorted based on how difficult they are. So posting daily on LinkedIn is probably the easiest one. The second one is that you should publish on some Medium publications. So if you don't know Medium or Medium publications, if you go on medium.com, you'll find different articles. And most of these articles are published through different publications. So these publications, they act like newspapers. So if you want to write through that newspaper, you have to write it against the format which they have given. And once you share the draft with them, if they approve, 
then they will publish it against all the people who have subscribed to that newspaper or in this case it is publication so towards data science this is a screenshot of that it is probably the biggest publication on medium for data science topics and this is a screenshot of the page where they are saying how you can write for towards data science generally the hiring bar is not very high it's not that you have to write something which is innovative or which previously has not been done it's totally not the case it's, it's just that it has to be structured well it should be a useful thing and if you really want to take like your brand building to a next level this is a very good exercise that you should try to see that what kind of articles other people have published in the same publication and then what are their guidelines and try to publish something. Maybe the first publication would be the hardest one, but once you have published one, then you know what kind of thing it needs to get published and then you can just keep publishing it. And if you are publishing from something like towards data science, then it's hundreds of thousands of people would be looking at that content and then you go back to LinkedIn and then you share, okay, recently I wrote this article for Towards Data Science. It is published here. Please check it out. Now, if someone looks at that, this gives a very clear signal that you are not only a passionate, aspiring data scientist. I mean, you are someone at a, at a totally different level. You are at a teaching stage and you are publishing in some of the big publications. And it's not impossible, definitely not very hard. So this is the other thing which I would suggest you try. The third thing, again, taking the difficulty to the next level is that you try to get some unpaid work. Generally, there are a lot of non-profits which need some help related to data. It could be data analysis, it could be AI, ML systems, etc. And there are plenty of websites for these. For example, there's a catch a fire, there's a data kind, there's data science for social good. And if you Google these, you'll find many such other websites which are basically a broker between connecting people who have data skills and connecting non-profits who need some sort of help. And by actually working for a non-profit cause with other people, you will not only some gain some real life experience, but it is something you can show on your resume as well. So instead of showing just a blank thing for the last six months or 12 months on your resume, you can see that I've been working with this non-profit as a data scientist and this is what I have accomplished. Even if it is an unpaid job, it is totally legal and morally correct to put something for a customer or a stakeholder or a nonprofit which you have worked for even if you didn't get paid for because nowhere in your resume it is mentioned that the job has to be paid and even at the time of background check you can clearly say that i did not get paid for it and that experience will get verified so again this requires a lot more effort and time for you to finding a good nonprofit which is a good match for your skill set and then working for them for free uh, it is painful but it gives you real life working experience and something to put in on your resume. And definitely much, much better than just having a portfolio. The last thing which I would say is that, again, this is probably the hardest in the four things which I've listed, is try to find some good open source project and try to contribute for it. Now this would require a lot of effort and a very good skill set, especially if you are contributing towards something which is very popular, for example, Pandas or Scikit-learn. I would definitely not suggest that you go there uh, in the first phase, but try to find some library which is getting popular, have some usage, and then try to see if you can contribute the code towards it. A very good starting point could be that once you have identified what is the what is the library you want to contribute? First, go through their repository. Understand what does the code structure look like. Actually use that library so at least you have an understanding of how different functions, etc., work in it. And then this is a screenshot for Pandas AI. This is an emerging library uh, which is becoming very popular. You'll see that here they have mentioned issues and there are about 28 issues mentioned. Uh, I've taken a screenshot of this as well. So these are the issues which are reported by other developers in terms of what are the things which can be enhanced or some bugs which needs to be fixed. So once you have developed an understanding of how that library works, what is the code structure for that, what is the particular issue which, which needs to be addressed, then you can try to implement it and write it at your end and then you create a pull request. If that gets approved, then you are officially a contributor towards that library. Now, this is a big thing. 
because people brag about it if they are a contributor towards some open source projects in your resume in your linkedin in your even during your technical rounds if you mention that i'm a regular contributor towards that that open source project because i'm very passionate about it it gives a clear very undeniable signal that you are a pro at your game so of course all the options which i have mentioned here they are much difficult in comparison to just building some portfolio projects and that is why now you can see that when i was saying that even if you have a very verifiable github and people look at it it is still considered low effort because this is what you are comparing against and if you have time and especially if this is the first time you'll be getting a job i would highly suggest that you at least start with this very basic and first step of posting something on linkedin so that you start building your brand someone when they come at your linkedin page they are impressed by the depth of your knowledge and what are all the things you have learned and all the things you have shared and since these will be handwritten notes it, it at least gives a signal that you have not just copy pasted someone else's post on linkedin and just pasted there it's something you have written with your own hands and these small steps they help build credibility in the eyes of the recruiter in the eyes of the hiring manager and also when you bring up in your technical rounds this is what helps you get the job now if you want a detailed road map on how i would use linkedin if i have to get a data science job today within 90 days please check out this video i'm pretty sure you'll like it thank you so much for watching